Titus Moth. Today we're going to be looking at the solar system slash black hole system of the movie Interstellar. Now, what what got me confused is, for starters, the closest planet, Miller's planet, is covered in water that is about one and a half to two meters thick. But it has tsunamis that are nearly ten kilometers high. Ten kilometers high. That is insane. But the thing about Miller's planet is, everybody's saying, oh, the planet's tidy locked. The planet's not tidy locked, it's the waves on the planet that are constantly, sorry, that just freaked me out a bit, sorry, <laughs> they're constantly on the same side that the planet faces, the black hole. The planet rotates, the waves are stationary, that gives the illusion that the waves are coming towards you and are moving away from you. You are going towards and moving away from the waves. Miller's planet is 1.3 times the mass of Earth. It has a iron core that is slightly larger than Earth and it's able to produce a magnetic field that it is a lot stronger than Earth's. I believe up to three times stronger. Miller's planet is incredibly close to the accretion disk Luckily, the black hole, Gargantua, does not... This is what people get confused about, is they say that every type of black hole eats a an accretion disk. Not true. Gargantua is in a class of black holes called ultra-massive super-light black holes. Gargantua is a very light, ultra-massive black hole means that it's really big in radius but it's incredibly light it's not one million suns it's not a hundred million suns it's around a thousand to ten thousand suns yes that's still incredibly heavy but its size is huge compare it to like Sat if you compare the Gargantua to Sagittarius A are supermass black hole. Gargantua will be, I would say, six times larger, but it is about a million times lighter. Sagittarius A is 4.3 or 3.4 million suns in mass. Gargantua is on the range of a couple hundred thousand suns. Very light black hole, but it is incredibly big. This is what keeps Miller, Miller's planet warm, is the accretion disk around this ultra-massive light black hole. The next planet, Dr. Man's planet, or as I like to call Man's planet, is an odd planet. Because what we have is a planet. Now, this is odd, right? From space, man's planet looks like it's got a, a very sparse atmosphere. Well, it looks like it's got an atmosphere with a solid ice uh, surface. And uh, this is where it, be it becomes a bit confusing because really it's got two surfaces, right? It, 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 Part of this atmosphere is frozen in mid-air. I know that's a bit hard to 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 try and think of, like a planet with a partially frozen atmosphere that is afloat. Yes, that is really confusing. And yes, sounds like I'm talking absolute shit, right? But I'm not. In here, I can't make a planet that has a partially frozen action. But, the clouds are frozen on Dr. Man's planet. What This gives the illusion that it's got two surfaces. 
it does in a way, but it's got like one and a half surfaces because the clouds, it's just clouds that are frozen. The real surface is, what is it, like 20 kilometers underneath the ice? That's when you get to the rocky surface. So, in reality, this used, this may have used to be a water world, but then it was probably pushed out slightly because of some, I don't know, probably a burp from Gargantua, or there was a fourth planet, fourth very small planet that hit Dr. Man's planet, sped up just a little bit, that made it to go into a slightly wider orbit. Dr. Man's planet is 0 0.8 times the mass of Earth, means that it is slightly smaller than Earth, and it has a sparse atmosphere. It, the ice acts as like a magnetic field because Dr. Man's planet does not have a magnetic field. It has a very small iron core. It only takes up 14.2% of the planet itself. The ice on the planet takes up 30.2% seven percent of the planet this means that the planet must have either collected a huge amount of the ice that increased around the black hole or it came up somewhere else so that's dr man's planet uh we will come to back back to man's planet dr man's planet in a minute We've got a third planet that I don't know the name of, but I'm going to call it Earth 2.0. Alright, there's, there's a lot of things that we, that we don't know, I don't know. First off, we don't know the size of it, so I just thought, oh, I'll just make it one Earth size. Second of all, atmosphere, it seems similar, because we can see that Brad uh, takes her helmet off, she's able to breathe. Obviously, it's got oxygen. Hydrogen, nitrogen, all that. So, is it a world where we can live on? Yes, because one, it's got a magnetic field. Two, it's got an atmosphere that can support life. Three, it seems to have seasons. And it also has a day and night cycle. Because Dr. Man, because Men's Planet, Man's Planet, and just Earth 2.0, I don't even know the name of it. They all rotate, they are not tidy locked to the black hole. So, all those planets, all, all these three planets, they are not tidy locked to the black hole. They all have their rotational axis, they have a day and night cycle. Like, um, Dr. Man, he said there's a 67 hour day that tells us that. It has a rotation, it's not tidy locked. Because if you put a planet around a black hole, it's going to orbit very fast. Now, these planets, Doctor, uh, the Miller's planet, Dr. Man's planet, and Bernard's planet, I think it's called, I'm not entirely sure. Please correct me in the comments. <laughs> I'm really sorry. What it shows is, is Dr. Man's planet has a 67 hour day. That means that it's not tightly locked because the planet is orbiting the black hole in like I think it's like two days, two 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 day one or two day like uh, orbit period means that it's not tightly locked. If it was tightly locked, then obviously, but uh, it's not tightly locked. With Earth 2.0 or or what I'm gonna call it Bernard's planet because it's an easier name and I can't remember the name of. The, that planet. This planet is also not tightly locked because when we, when, at the, the, the end scene, uh, we can see that Brad, uh, the first part we can see that Gargantua is high in the sky, the last part of the scene, Gargantua is just setting. What that tells us is it has a rotation. This is crucial for life on this planet, for humans on this planet. 
because it shows us that this planet has rotation, it has a good atmosphere, it has a magnetic field, it has a system, we have two sister planets that have water, one that has water, one that has ice, plenty of bloody ice. Uh, but there's a fun fact to be honest, Dr. Man's planet has about seven times more water on it than Earth does. Yeah, that 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 is a huge man. Miller's planet. Oh, this is this is this is where it, be, it becomes a bit confusing because Miller's planet has zero point eight. It, it has eighty percent of the water on Earth on its surface, but it's only about two meters thick, two meters deep. So how does that work? To be honest? Because it seems too mystic, it's because the waves, like the waves, they draw in all the water, make it shallower. And these waves are just massive. They're huge. You will not escape these waves. If you get hit by these waves, you're done. You're dead. You you're end off. You're, you're dead. Right? So you got Minus Planet, you got Dr. Man's Planet, that I'm just going to call Man's Planet, and then you got. Earth 2.0, I've got to call Bernard's planet, whatever you want to call it. Um, you, you, the next thing is how are these planets keeping warm? How are they able to have livable surfaces? It's because of the disk around them. The, 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 no, the, the disk around the black hole, my apologies. The disk around the black hole is not getting, getting in because there's obviously a huge amount of energy coming out the black hole that is pushing the disc away or the disc is going so fast that it's keeping out of the black hole's gravitational reach or as I said earlier the black hole is so big but yet it's so light that it can't eat the, the disc but it can keep it in orbit now as you can see here bits of the disc are just falling apart because I've got a tiny star that is orbiting here you're, you're probably like going to ask me, oh, why are you still a star there? Because I can't make the disc produce light, so I put a star there, and that's why the disc is just falling apart. But this black hole is massive. The black hole gargantua is bloody huge, but it is incredibly light. If you put Earth in orbit around where Miller's planet is, we, Earth will still be habitable. It, around Gargantua because of that disc. Uh, if you put Mars in where Miller's planet is, Mars will be habitable. Same Venus, same all planets in our system, they'll all be habitable. Not the gas giants because obviously they're made of gas, they'll be just being torn apart. But Titan, even the tiny moons, they will be habitable because of Gargantua and its ring. So what this means is if you if there is a black hole out there that seems to have one a planet and two a accretion disk around it where it's not swallowing it, most likely that planet is going to be habitable. So we've got to start looking at black holes very carefully. We've got to start looking for at black holes. We've got to start thinking right. This plant black hole has an accretion disk. Doesn't have a planet. This black hole has an increased disk as so and so planets. Um, so our best bet, <laughs> Interstellar has really taught me, probably you guys, a lot about black holes. One, black holes can have planets around them. Why? Because this film Interstellar had I don't know how many scientists, I think a couple hundred scientists, a couple tens of scientists working on this planet, uh, movie trying to make it as accurate as, as it could. They did an outstanding job. The accretion disk, yes, an accretion disk around a black hole will give off light. It will keep a planet warm if the black hole obviously doesn't swallow the accretion disk. But they made the black hole huge because the smaller the black hole, the stronger the gravitational pull. I know that sounds weird. I know that you're going to say, oh no, it's bigger the black hole, the more gravitational pull. Not true. 
bigger the black hole, the less gravitational because it's got a larger surface area. Now, um, now, as long as Gargantua, oh, I don't know, as, if a star, if another star comes along, gets ripped apart, and then becomes part of the solar system, it most likely going to vaporize Miller's planet. This accretion disk will not disappear. It will stay there. It will stay in orbit. This means these planets will stay habitable forever. This this black hole is not shrinking. It's not growing. It's staying the same size. It means that this is the best place for life. This is your jackpot for life. You've got three planets that are able to support life. Well, man's planet is a bit of a tricky situation. Man's planet, of course, very tricky situation because you've got like a 10 kilometer high tsunamis. But they are all able to support life. Man's planet is not that cold. I think it's around minus 60 degrees. We can live with that fucking fly. Piss off. Sorry, there's a fly flying in my face. Um, Miller's planet, I think it's around 20 degrees Celsius. Warm. Nicely warm, actually. Earth 2.0 or Barnard's planet is around Earth temperature. It's around 13 degrees. Nice temperature. What this means is that if Gargantua was real, if this entire system was real, I bet there will be life forms living on those planets right now. And I don't know where the hell this black hole came from. To be honest. For one, this black hole could not have come from a supermassive star. Because it's just too big. It's just too big. And it could have been like, I don't know, a cluster of three black holes. They could have merged. Uh, there could be a huge ring system around them that could have coalesced into the three planets that are known in the movie. And then obviously you had Men's Planet had water, Man's Planet that may have once had water and then froze over and then you got Barnard's Planet that is warm for some reason. Now there is a dead zone where Man's Planet just lies on the inner part of the dead zone. We call this the well, we don't call it anything, to be honest, so... Uh, well, I, I would like to call it the ultra-cold zone. This is basically where the radiation stops, and then it starts again. I know that sounds weird, but... Uh, it's like a... It's like an invisible ring of nothing around the black hole, right? No space, nothing. Absolutely zero matter. Like, you look at space and you think, oh, space is empty. It's not. It's made of matter. Ring around the black hole. Like, Gargantua, right? Man's planet lies on the inner part of this very small, ultra-cold ring. I don't know what to call it. I'm going to call it dead ring. Because, I mean, it's where radiation stops. If a planet is in that ring, uh, it's not just going to freeze to death. It's just, it's going to become the coldest place in the universe. It's, that's just not talking about, right? Um, so what you have here, what you have with Gargantua is you have the most habitable place in the universe. You have three planets that are able to, to support human life. And then you have a wormhole for an extra. Yeah, you, you, you got a quadruple bonus there because for one you can travel back and forth from our solar system to Gargantua. Two, you got three very beautiful habitable planets. And three, you got a very calm, very, I'm surprised of how calm this black hole was. Very calm black hole. It shocked me, to be honest. It really did shock me. Uh, but it shows that a black hole can have planets around it. 
can have our bill payments. So, I mean, thank you for watching. You guys have given me so much support. And I just wanted to make this video because I just, I was looking over Interstellar over and over and over again. And because I love science, I am crazy about science. And I've just recently started looking at black holes. Interstellar really opened a doorway for me. It's really helped me to understand that a black hole more suited to, it, the thing is like, a star blows up when it's got planets around it, blows up, forms a massive black hole. This black hole grabs hold of most of the stuff, puts it into orbit. Some planets form from that. Some, well, most become habitable. Probably one or two fall into the so-called death's ring. And unfortunately, they're gonna be lost. So planet, uh, black holes can support planets. And that gives us a chance to like think, hang on a minute, there's a better chance of finding aliens. And there is. But as you can see in the simulation, bits of the ring are starting to be flung out because of the white dwarf. But obviously with Gargantra, it's just a black hole with a ring around it. The ring is not going to decay, the ring is going to stay there, it's going to stay in orbit around Gargantua, Gargantua is not going to eat it. Now you're probably going to say, oh Gargantua is going to eat it, no it won't. And I don't know that, because it's in a complete orbit, okay, it's not falling in, it's in a complete orbit. The ring is trying to push out, the black hole is countering that, perfect beautiful sync you've got with Gargantua and the ring. The ring is pushing out from its energy, Gargantua with enough gravity is pulling in the ring that creates a counter balance that keeps the ring in orbit. Not too strong, not too weak, just enough to keep that ring in orbit. Thank you for watching this The Other Moth. I appreciate you all watching. I hope that this helps you guys understand the film instant and understand all black holes all together. And don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. It will mean the world to me. Um, put whatever comment you want uh, down. I would say don't really spam all the nasty comments because I don't want that. Uh, but you can put one or two comments that can say like hey you missed this or you missed that or you kind of mess this up I would appreciate that I wouldn't appreciate one of you guys saying oh you so and so tosser you fucking missed this and you you're uh, a, a, a real you know cunt you, you I just don't want that I just it's just Anyways, uh, I really do hope that this helps you, you guys. It's helped me, to be honest. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. I would appreciate you if you share this video on every social media. Now, I'm not asking for subscribers. I'm not being one of those dickbags that are... Well, I'm not going to call them dickbags. That, that, that's completely wrong with me. I'm probably going to lose like half of my subscribers right now because I just said that. I'm not going to be one of those guys, one of those guys, that most of them are awesome, alright, most of them are pretty good, some of them, uh, you've got to be a bit aware of them, but I'm not going to be one of those guys where I'm going to be saying, oh, please subscribe and I'll do this, I'm not one of those guys, I'm, I'm like the guys that I just, just like upload a video, and I just wait, I just wait, I really do, I just wait. So again, thank you for watching. I hope that you like, subscribe, comment, and share. And just thank you for watching. See you later.